So I bought a new set of doll calipers. I uh, bought a 0 to 6 Michitoyo. Model number 505-742. And this is how they came in the mail. The only thing that's different is the plastic's missing. The plastic wrap is missing. I actually opened these up and took a peek, but I have not used them. So you're seeing them as they showed up on my doorstep. Um, today I'd like to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this Michitoyo dial caliper and I'd also like to make some comparisons to some other dial calipers I have. So the first thing you might notice is that on the package is right here. This pair of calipers was made in Brazil and the older ones were made in Japan. Um, so I, I do believe they're manufactured in multiple countries now and uh, you, that's evident right here also. By the language. So anyway, and the first thing you notice when you open it is in underneath the box, this model comes with a certificate of calibration. Now you don't have to order it with a certificate of calibration. It's a little bit extra charge, but you can get the same dial caliper for, uh, I think it was like $15 cheaper without it. And I opted to get the certificate of calibration. I really don't know why. I'm, they're all about the same. Uh, I, I seriously doubt there's any difference in this one and one without this piece of paper. Nevertheless, there it is. And then the next thing you notice is the plastic injection molded case, um, which pretty much everyone's going to this to one degree or another. I'm not real crazy about this. Uh, even though I typically don't store my calipers in these cases that they come in, I, I still like to see a little more quality than this. I'd almost rather see them reduce the cost of the product and just send the caliper in a you know a blister pack um, because these hinges are going to wear out and break. It's not something you're going to use a lot. Most people, like I said, most people discard this or they put it on a shelf somewhere, and forget about it, and put their caliper in their toolbox. So when you open the box, the next thing you see is um, we'll see. This is the warranty card, which I have not filled out yet which I will and then there's um, this is like the maintenance and care instructions and it's also um, the description of how to use the product it comes in multiple languages and buried somewhere in here is the English version there it is so uh, the cover safety and the uh, nomenclature for the different parts of the dial caliper so forth and so on And there is a note in here that reminds you to remove the protective oil that it comes shipped with before use. And then there's the dial caliper in a plastic sleeve with a strip of protective um, protect wrap oil paper maybe or anti-corrosion paper. And there's the dial caliper. And then you'll notice right out of the package the needle does not return to zero. It's just shy of it, about a half a thousand shy. And this has not been monkeyed with. This is the way it came from the manufacturer. Now the finish looks pretty good. It has rather sharp edges, but I guess most of them do. But for some reason it's borderline uncomfortable. It is absolutely very smooth though. Very smooth action. Feels great. So, before I do anything else, before I make any corrections on this, I thought I would try checking it with some standards. I have here a 1 inch and a 2 inch standard. These came in a micrometer set that I have. I think it's a stare at micrometer set. I thought I would check it. So there's the one inch. And it's returning to uh, about the same place it was. Let's see. With without the standard. And with the standard. Yeah, about three quarters of a thousand shot. Let's try it with the two inch. Let's see if it returns to the same place. Yeah, so it's consistent. So I think that means it's safe to go ahead and adjust the dial. 
So I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment here. All right, now let's see if it returns. Okay, yep, that works good. All right, the second knock. I'm going to knock on this a couple times, I can tell already. Um, I'm not a big fan of plastic on a measuring instrument. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's, it just seems to me like it's um, easier to fail. It just feels kind of cheap. And I see two pieces on this that knock caliper that are plastic. This cover is plastic. And so is this bumper. This little bracket or bumper. I don't know what this is called in the nomenclature, but um, I call it a bumper. It's plastic. And to me, it looks like it's going to fail. It looks like it's going to pop out and be lost forever. There's no screws holding it in. It's just got these two little nubs that are held in by friction. You just pop it in. Um, I'd be willing to bet this is going to disappear in my shop somewhere. So I thought it might be kind of neat to compare this to an older Michitoyo dial caliper. And I have one. This is a um, mid-80s-ish 0-6 Michitoyo dial caliper. And it comes in a steel box, a stamped steel uh, vinyl covered box. Right here it says made in, made in Japan pops open and stays in that position. That's kind of nice. It has a velvet line case. So you can see the differences in design since the 80s. In the older version there were rounded ends on the measuring surfaces. Now they're more angular. The newer dial caliper has a larger dial which makes it a little easier to read. Now the older one has a reading range of 0 to 200 thousandths on the dial, so the numbers are smaller. But if this had a reading scale of 0 to 1, I'm sure that they would be similar. So really the only comparison I'm making here is the size of the dial. Another design change since the 80s would be this cover, this plastic cover. The original one was all stainless steel construction. Well, I mean, with the exception to the bezel. And I like that. I like that everything's stainless steel on the original. However, the new, the shape of this plastic cover is nice. I also have another dial caliper that I like a lot. Um, and the real reason I bought the new dial caliper was because I broke my Starrett. And I thought I would give Michitoyo a try. But this is my Starrett, my Starrett 0 to 6. Uh, and I broke. I dropped it actually and I broke the internal measuring ear right here. So it's still a good functional dial caliber except for that. And I had to have a new one to replace it for that reason. Now the Starrett has a, a stainless steel cover right here. And I like that. It gives it a little more weight and feels like, makes it feel more substantial in the hand. And I really can't tell you why but I like that. Um, it also has a steel bracket with screws holding it in and a plastic bumper on the back. That's kind of nice. It's also very smooth. Otherwise, they're very similar in design. Very similar in finish. Oh, well, here's another thing I noticed. On the Michitoyo, the numbers and the graduation lines, I, I can't feel that they're de etched at any depth on the beam here. Um, matter of fact, I can just barely feel that there's any depth at all to the etching. So I'm worried that this is going to wear off over time. Now if I run my fingernail along the beam of the stair, it, it's much deeper etched. So I'm not so worried about this one. Now, on the older Michitoyo, it's the same as the Starrett. It's very deeply etched. I like that. Now, it sounds like I'm complaining about the Michitoyo, but honestly, it's a really good caliper for the price. This caliper is only a, a roughly $100. I think you can get it in anywhere within $5 plus or minus of $100. So it's a pretty good deal for what you get. I, I do believe the Starrett was a little more expensive than that. 
So there's my opinion of the Michitoyo dial caliper. It's a good dial caliper for the price. I honestly think the Starrett is a little more quality made. And I also think that they've kind of gone downhill since the 80s. They've made some improvements, but their overall quality may not be where it used to be. There it is.